Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Kristen Talbot. I'm the program manager for Maven Project. Thank you all for joining us today and our friends at El Rio for hosting today's session, Chest Pain in Children in the Office Setting with Dr. Gerald Engoff. Dr. Engoff was most recently an assistant clinical professor of pediatrics at Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center in New Hampshire. He specializes in pediatric and adult congenital heart disease and served as co-director of the Dartmouth Hitch Hitchcock Adult Congenital Heart Program. And we are so very lucky to have him as a Maven Project volunteer. So Dr. Engoff, when you're ready, please begin. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my talk on chest pain evaluation in children with particular focus on ambulatory care and, and the office setting. Uh, I have uh, no conflicts. This is a CME activity through uh, UCLA, the David Geffen School of Medicine. The objectives um, for my talk, what I hope that you will take away with, from this um, talk, how to explain <clears throat> how chest pain in children differs from adults, that you'll be able to use a careful history and exam to define chest pain risk characteristics, and be able to complete a chest pain evaluation confidently with a minimal need for testing and consultation. <clears throat> Through the talk, I think much of what I say will will refer back to these objectives with uh, uh, some some emphasis that I that, that, that I hope you'll capture. <clears throat> a bit of overview to the talk first, uh, a little bit about my background. I'd like to present some clinical scenarios which will frame uh, my talk and uh, some of the elements and conclusions. And I like to develop what I call the pediatric chest pain conundrum. A few uh, articles from the literature that I think will help with further framing the topic to discuss diagnosis and treatment and then some conclusions. Uh, a few pre-evaluation questions I think we'll, we can ask that'll help me understand a little bit better about what your understanding uh, of of, uh, of the topic going into the the talk. Uh, uh, first, um, it'll help me uh, do you folks perform pediatric chest pain evaluations? Do you feel comfortable performing them? And do you know what the key history and examination elements should be? And do you know what the role of testing should be with respect to, to chest pain evaluation in children? Some yes or no's with, with each of those and and we'll kind of see what folks think going into the rest of the talk. We'll give it about 30 more seconds, just anybody that hasn't answered. All right, so I'm going to share the results. So it looks like on one, uh -uh, it's about 67% yes. Two is 100% no, so do they feel comfortable performing. Uh, do they know the key history is also 100% no? And do you know what role testing should have is 100% no? That helps out a lot. lot. Looks like um, we 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 can can make a, a bit of contribution to uh, to the topic. Uh, thanks for answering those questions. <clears throat> what I'd like to do uh, is to present some clinical scenarios 
that I think will will help uh, illustrate uh, uh, the the issues involved. Um, uh, first scenario is a 15 year old young lady <laughs> with chest pain of two weeks duration referred for pediatric cardiology evaluation. <clears throat> she had been in the emergency room the day after onset. She had most tests that anyone could have thought of. She was there several hours and and, and the cost was was extraordinary, $7,000 or more at the time it was done. And the chest pain at the time she came by for a consult visit was described as sharp, stabbing, initially seven of 10 intensity, lasting seconds, left upper anterior chest radiating to the shoulder and back. It was plur pl pluritic and positional, occurring multiple times a day and improving with some insights. Okay, next question. Based on this scenario, <clears throat> to this point, do you think it's unlikely, possible, or likely that her symptom is cardiac? All right, so we have um, in the poll, 60% uh, said possibly and 40% said unlikely. Okay, <clears throat> well. <clears throat> well, some further history is helpful. The day before onset, was her first cheerleader practice of the season. She helped toss her teammate into the air. She awoke the next day with pain. And the pain had <clears throat> diminished progressively. It was almost gone at the time of, of, of her visit. <clears throat> and physical examination was notable for <clears throat> normal vital signs, oxygenation. Uh, and her pain was present with deep inspiration, and she had a tender area over the left upper chest on firm palpitation, pal on firm palpation, not palpitation, <laughs> which reproduced her symptom. <clears throat> her treatment was reassurance. <clears throat> the further history was particularly helpful. History is really critical in these situations and uh, the with coupled with the examination it was pretty clear that this was musculoskeletal pain next scenario a seven-year-old boy with chest pain and shortness of breath of two months <clears throat> referred for cardiology consultation he had multiple primary care visits ekg and chest x-ray were normal not improved with the trial of an inhaler and his chest pain at <clears throat> the time of his visit uh, was described as occurring in the morning. Most days, a, a diffuse pressure sensation, lasting hours, worse with breathing, exclusively at rest, with some shortness of breath, and actually improved with exertion, with activity. Question again, unlikely, possibly, or likely? due to a cardiac abnormality or 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 cause All right we're a little bit more split on this we're at 25% say unlikely 50% say possibly and 25 say likely okay so i a distribution. Once again, further history was helpful. <clears throat> history is always <clears throat> helpful. He had missed many days from a new school. He had changed schools because his family was moving because their house had burned down. And their house had burned down two months prior, the same duration of his symptom on Christmas Eve. When asked, he said he'd lost all his toys and presents in the fire and started to cry. 
<clears throat> his physical examination was normal and his treatment was reassurance and actually a recommendation for, for, for counseling. <clears throat> Again, <clears throat> the final conclusion was it was unlikely to be a, his, for his symptom to be cardiac in nature. Third, a 12 year old boy referred <clears throat> for a medical excuse it's from school gym class. His family wanted him to have a note. And his history was that he had two to three months of vague exertional chest aching occurring most recently playing basketball was during gym class, rapidly relieved with rest. <clears throat> he had no rest symptoms. <clears throat> he did not want to go back to gym class because of the symptom. He otherwise was well, <clears throat> without any family history of premature cardiac disease, hyperlipidemia, sudden death. His examination was normal. Uh, he had no murmurs, abnormal or abnormal pulses, and his oxygen level was normal, and his EKG was normal. Once again, same questions. See what you think. We are at 100% possibly. Okay. <laughs> you folks are starting to zero in. This is good. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> additional information. His next step was to have an echocardiogram. He had normal right and left ventricular function, <clears throat> normal pulmonary artery pressure, and notably, the study showed an anomalous coronary artery with origin of the left main coronary artery from the right coronary cusp coursing between the main pulmonary artery and the aorta. This is a potentially life-threatening abnormality that is exceedingly rare <clears throat> occurring between to and 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 five instances per ten thousand people, uh, it is threatening because the uh, abnormal artery going between the main pulmonary artery and the aorta may become pinched, particularly with exercise, where the pulmonary artery and the aorta are larger in pulsing. A rare disorder. His symptom was likely due to a, a cardiac cause. <clears throat> he was referred for a cardiac MRI and possible intervention. <clears throat> the history, again, was uh, critically helpful. The main difference in this sense, in this patient, compared to the, the, the first two, was that, again, the, the Notably, the history which uh, described a, a cardiac-like symptom exclusively with exertion. <clears throat> These scenarios uh, are sort of the background for what I like to call the pediatric chest pain conundrum. Chest pain is uh, frequently a symptom in childhood. Symptom creates a very high level of concern among both family and providers, often resulting in urgent referrals, emergency room or urgent care visits. The cost <clears throat> for these evaluations is quite high. And the bottom line, which I'll develop further, a cardiac cause of chest pain in children is rare. Again, that instance that I gave where there was in the third scenario, a cardiac cause, it occurs two to five in 10,000 individuals. Children are not small adults. Heart attacks, specifically myocardial infarction, with extremely rare exceptions, do not occur in children. 
Now, if one looks at the literature or, or textbooks particularly uh, about what causes of chest pain may be, <clears throat> this is the sort of thing that you will see for cardiac causes and for pulmonary causes. The point is that these uh, such lists are not helpful. There's no way one could exclude each of these listed conditions many of which are exceedingly rare, <clears throat> particularly in the ambulatory care uh, or office setting in the short period of time, particularly, that you would have. History, as I've already started uh, uh, mentioning and, and repeating, is, is, is critical and helpful. <clears throat> Often uh, the history that, that I receive when a patient's referred is, is kind of sparse or vague. The referral might say that just simply that, that the individual about whom there are questions has had, has had chest pain without uh, more detail. The elements really help out, and the clinical scenarios I think have have already um, uh, centered on on some of these elements, and I've mentioned how they can differentiate. Certainly, <clears throat> what's the onset? What's the duration? What's the frequency? What's the character of the discomfort? Sharp stabbing on one side versus a a vague ache or a pressure or a, sensa or, or a sensation of shortness of breath <clears throat> clearly uh, uh, steer you in one direction or another. The intensity, the location, whether there's radiation, is it felt in other areas? Factors that make it worse. <clears throat> uh, elements that relieve, like you know, in one instance, um, um, NSAIDs and particularly the exertional relationship and any other symptoms such as dizziness, shortness of breath. As an example, here's a, a sentence <clears throat> that encompasses almost all of these elements. Acute onset of severe, sharp, stabbing, pleuritic pain in the center of the chest without relationship to exertion. Lasting seconds occurring off and on over two days, relieved with ibuprofen and improved with exercise. That single sentence, I think, would allow you to confidently say that it is unlikely that this is a cardiac symptom based on those history elements. The literature helps out a couple of notable articles. The first, <clears throat> um, the effectiveness of screening for life-threatening chest pain in children from 2011 was a retrospective study of, of 3,700 children at Children's Hospital in Boston who were seen for evaluation of chest pain. A cardiac cause in 1%, 37 patients. There were three deaths on follow-up, but none of them were cardiac. Two suicides and one retroperitoneal hemorrhage. And no patient discharged from the clinic died as a result of a cardiac condition. Here were the causes uh, deemed to be on review of these patients retrospectively, 3,700 patients that actually most of the causes were unknown, over 50%. <clears throat> Frequently musculoskeletal, next pulmonary, asthma was a, was a common thread. And GI was next to those causes that were identified. Anxiety. <clears throat> and looking at specifically in further detail the cardiac causes, there were 19 of the 3,700 patients who had intrinsic cardiac disease or, or just one half percent. And zeroing in on these, uh, pericarditis and myocarditis were, were 14 of those cases, an anomalous coronary artery, a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and a dilated cardiomyopathy. So these were the, the patients who truly had cardiac disease, 
that was deemed to be the source of their symptom. <clears throat> a second study, this is prospectively using a, a, a chest pain evaluation guideline known by the acronym SCAMPS. <clears throat> Here, there were a little over a thousand patients and two out of the thousand or 0.2% <clears throat> had chest pain due to a cardiac cause, one with pericarditis and one with an anomalous coronary artery. <clears throat> and testing outside the guideline recommendations demonstrated only uh, incidental findings and patients returning for persistent symptoms did not have any cardiac disease. Uh, the study identified some key abnormal elements. And again, I think this will help you when you see a patient uh, to decide whether or not it's more or less likely that their symptom is cardiac. History, again, uh, a, a critical aspect. Chest pain with exertion, exertional syncope, radiation, jaw, back, arm, shoulder. Again, these are angelal quality characteristics. Increasing supine associated with fever, those aimed towards pericarditis and myocarditis as an acute illness. Uh, family history, uh, was there sudden death, cardiomyopathy, or a hypercoagulable state? And abnormalities on physical examination certainly suggesting an acute illness, a non-innocent murmur. Um, that's sort of a subject all by itself, how to differentiate innocent from non-innocent murmurs. <clears throat> innocent murmurs being common in children, basically they're, they're, they're soft and variable and vibratory, the innocent murmurs. <clears throat> uh, any uh, other abnormality um, of cardiac exam, a pericardial friction rub, uh, uh, and um, a gallop and an increased uh, second sound of the uh, pulmonary, increased pulmonary component, the second sound suggested cardiomyopathy. Uh, uh, these should these elements are, are what you can center on in helping to sort of say, do I need to take a next step? Well, what might be a next step? <clears throat> in the guideline, an echocardiogram was the next step. And again, here are those those aspects of history and physical examination I went to, and I in included. Uh, this slide because um, of uh, the EKG abnormalities that the study felt should uh, uh, um, uh, should direct towards further study. Right ventricular hypertrophy, left ventricular hypertrophy, STT changes are greater than two millimeters, low QRS, that would suggest a pericardial effusion. S1, Q3, T3 is the EKG pattern that sometimes occurs with pulmonary embolization. QT prolongation. These these are, are very specific EKG abnormalities. Uh, and uh, it, uh, that, that would urge you to a next step. <clears throat> well, what about echoes? Well, they're sort of a mixed blessing. When the test was done according to the guideline, the the those two cases, the two abnormalities, the the uh, that were found were I identified the the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and the and the abnormal right coronary artery. When the test was done, when not recommended, <clears throat> there were no abnormalities uh, to suggest cardiac disease, and in both instances, there were a lot of incidental findings <clears throat> that were. It, it, at best um, an, annoying and did not help further with identifying what was the cause of the symptom. <clears throat> Additional testing was, was unhelpful and tests that you might think about really led nowhere. Specifically, exercise testing, ambulatory monitoring, 24-hour monitoring, halter monitoring, 
weren't helpful at all, as, as well as the, the series of other tests um, uh, that, that one would think could be done. In no instance in the study were they helpful, but certainly if done would have added to the cost. This um, guideline study was um, was republished with additional patients, over three thousand patients from 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 multiple uh, clinics and academic sites. And now, at this point, with with more patients enrolled, the cause cardiac cause of chest pain was only a quarter of a percent. And the uh, there were there was a high risk group, actually those elements that I showed on a previous slide, and all of the the patients with a cardiac cause were found with 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 uh, those high risk elements. And again, the same uh, the same uh, conditions: myocarditis, pericarditis, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and an anomalous right coronary artery. The non-cardiac causes were the same as in that earlier study, that retrospective study that I showed. Most common, musculoskeletal, followed by gastrointestinal and pulmonary underlying conditions that, that appear to um, of the definable causes <clears throat> to be most likely the, the, the uh, precipitating factor. Okay, well, what about treatments? Given the fact that chest discomfort in children is rarely due to, to cardiac causes, uh, the confirmed and supported by those, those studies, uh, certainly first on my list is nothing. Um, in, in determining that, that it's unlikely based on this background and those studies, that the discomfort is due to a cardiac cause. Uh, that's first on my list. <clears throat> Recommending observation over time, since there doesn't seem to be any increased risk, certainly to sort of say, well, let's see what happens with it. Uh, reassurance is a huge part of it because sometimes much of the reason for a patient being seen or referred is because the the family and the provider are are, are concerned and and the uh, and the reassurance of those um, involved it can be uh, 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 and given strongly can be helpful. Uh, if it's musculoskeletal discomfort, certainly anti-inflammatories. If it seems to be pulmonary, a trial of an inhaler, uh, <clears throat> or specifically pulmonary testing, antacids. Remember, GI causes um, if if further history suggests <clears throat> uh, was um, was on was next on the list of definable causes. Um, <clears throat> relaxation techniques. Um, if anxiety. Uh, Again, which was next on the list, seems to be an element. Uh, certainly, I've uh, where it appears appropriate to talk to and introduce the concept <clears throat> uh, counseling, as with that young boy whose house burned down, was was uh, was was clearly a, a an appropriate suggestion. Okay, so how might we kind of put all this together? A cardiac cause of chest pain in children is rare and can be <laughs> excluded by an outpatient examination. A careful history is essential. Key elements on history and exam help out those elements listed that, that identify an increased likelihood or risk. An EKG is worthwhile for initial screening it was part of that that guideline in protocol. Of the cardiac tests, an echo is best when disease is suspected. <clears throat> in each of the instances in, in those articles from the literature I mentioned, where there was an abnormality, an echocardiogram identified 
the that underlying cause and the additional tests those seemingly appropriate <laughs> were unhelpful those tests really came from the adult world thinking more about coronary artery <clears throat> uh, uh, atherosclerosis and heart attacks and they don't translate down into the pediatric years treatments are usually symptomatic and include reassurance okay um let's go back to those questions that we had at the at the beginning based on what i've offered and proposed uh how do you feel now uh, uh, how would you answer now those same questions we started with We are at a, oh no, no, sorry. Pretty much for every question, we're at a hundred percent. Yes, I should probably answer that. So yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Everybody, everybody said yes. Hopefully, yes to all. Thank you. That's okay. Uh, I'd like to offer in in closing. A statement from um, from a, a cardiologist, um, Bernard Lown, who is one of my mentors. Um, he <clears throat> was known for certainly for his um, his research uh, in arrhythmias over the years. He was the first to describe electrical cardioversion of arrhythmias as well as was a <clears throat> a winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, an unusual individual and his wisdom of all the skills mastered by a physician listening is by far the most difficult one learns to be attentive to the fluttering eyelid the inaudible sigh the unshed tear proper listening enables one to comprehend the unique narrative of another human being even at its scientific best medicine is dependent on the intimate story for doctors this is an exhilarating act of discovery for patient that identifies a healer. Medicine is you is ultimately a social discipline. It begins with a unique story from a fellow human being craving help. <clears throat> Maybe think of that a bit as you see patients and you listen to their story and 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 respond. So some questions um, that uh, that I might answer. We have a fair amount of time that I wanted to leave. Certainly, um, uh, th thoughts uh, you you may have some some questions uh, about what I've said. Yeah. So we do have one question. Just a reminder: you can put them into the Q and A box, the chat box, or even use the raise hand feature, and I'll unmute you so you can speak directly to Dr. Engel. First question right now. Do you recommend albuterol inhaler or ICS inhaler trial? If um, if if the history suggests that a that um, asthma or exercise induced bronchospasm might um, might um, be uh, a possibility, then. I'd kind of leave it up to you. Albuterol has certainly um, been around for a long time. Um, it's uh, I would I would suggest whatever you feel comfortable with or what you might do, uh, what you, what you might um, what you might prefer. I don't think there's any any magic. It's 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 the idea that the what does the history suggest. And might a, might a trial uh, uh, for a pulmonary cause be appropriate? I don't see any questions right now, but we'll pause. Don't worry. Uh, and just a reminder that you will get a CME survey after this uh, session. It's going to appear in a tab on your browser or um, 
you will get the email sent to you via Zoom and that's for anybody that's logged in and attended. So if you are uh, sharing a computer or in a classroom and you would like to still receive CME credit, please let me know that you attended. Therefore, I can send you the link. Uh, the sooner that you do the CME survey, the better. Um, this is our last CME session of the year. So we uh, have to put everything together and that will allow us to get all the information to UCLA quicker and you'll get your certificates quicker. I still don't see any questions, so I'll keep rambling. Uh, I'm, I might um, uh, offer um, another thought. Um, if if you um, uh, certainly with with Maven, there, there's the opportunity to to ask questions about a specific case and to pass along uh, um, your 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 questions. Um, and and I I really enjoy responding. Um, as as do the the other physician volunteers, uh, when describing your when your your patient when when asking your questions with respect to to uh, to cardiac disease, uh, uh, whether it be children or, or or adults, think a little bit about what I've said uh, um, about the, the the history to kind of go back to. To your notes or thoughts, and 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 try and comment as much as possible on some of those history elements, which will uh, make it um, e easier to to provide a response from from the the consultant, uh, and um, and uh, the the uh, to emphasize another aspect. Um, uh, is of the same of the, of the same ilk um, that the history is more important than testing. Uh, there were some studies that were done um, some uh, some forty years ago that looked at um, the relative value of of history and testing, and the same study was repeated. Now about ten years ago, and found the same, uh, the, essentially the same result, despite the development of, of multiple technologies. Basically, uh, uh, um, providers were asked just after their history to to write down what thought the diagnosis was, then after physical examination, and then after all testing. <clears throat> had been done and results received. And basically history alone provided the correct diagnosis in 75 to 80 percent of, of the instances. <clears throat> and uh, physical examination maybe in in uh, eight to ten percent and and then the remainder from 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 uh, testing and technology uh, uh, the uh, the remaining diagnosis, uh, correct diagnoses when when not already listed from history and physical examination. So uh, zero in on those on those history elements, <clears throat> and in the, in light of of the 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 relative risk based on the how those uh, elements lay out is 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 to uh, to make your uh, thoughts and to and to direct your actions based on um, what's more likely to be the answer uh, that uh, that testing alone uh, is um, is part of the reason why we have inefficiencies and expenses. Again, that's that that quality and process aspect of of what I do. I think the fancier our technology gets, the more we're losing what's what's really been valuable over time. We have two questions, Dr. Inga. The first is, I have a 14-year-old female patient who has been complaining of chest pain, prevents her from exercising or playing sports, and now won't play sports because of it. She's very concerned it, it is her heart and has been seen by a cardiology. Uh, T and Holt are not concerning. I think it's a big anxiety component, but I'm currently trialing an inhaler. Am I wrong to in 
am I wrong to continue encouraging her to play sports? If you are at the point where you feel it's unlikely that her symptom is cardiac in nature, then uh, I think you could head towards that list of treatments that I had that involves uh, various degrees of of uh, of reassurance. Um, I think uh, what would be good is to try and find out what else is going on in her life if you haven't. <clears throat> um, in uh, that, uh, you know, what's going on at school, what's going on at on at, on at ho home, uh, and then to to uh, to screen for depression, to screen for anxiety. Um, uh, to to um, if if anything comes out along those lines, what else is going on in this young person's life? Uh, <clears throat> we'd also review the the nature of the chest pain. Is it truly a pain? Is it some other discomfort? <clears throat> is it have the character of um, of of angina of that of this sort in scenario three, where it was an exertional, uh, vague, rather than sharper stabbing, discomfort, heaviness, tightness, is it angel in character? Uh, has um, has your patient had an echocardiogram? Did it get to that point? If the echocardiogram is normal, then further testing is not going to help. If you recall, monitoring, um, ambulatory monitoring was on my list of unhelpful tests. I certainly, uh, if, um, if, it, if she has had an echocardiogram, then I think she's had the test, the test that's, that would reassure you that cardi a cardiac cause in a child is, is unlikely to be present. Um, look around, the. Um, George, these those other his, historical elements. Is there something about school that that uh, that's um, that that's involved something uh, that that uh, that otherwise um, might uh, might be revealing? Uh, relaxation techniques, I think, are, are 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 quite valuable if you really get to the point where uh, where someone seems to to be uh, continually troubled and, and and rather than just sort of saying there's nothing wrong with you is to kind of see if you can you can actually provide uh, some al al some alternative other than this other than just a dismissal of, of the symptom. So for the history, find out what else is going on. And indeed, with the the SCAMP study, for those who did have risk factors, who did have uh, the uh, some uh, some need for some uh, further tests, an echocardiogram was the next best was <laughs> next best test. And if that was normal, it, uh, you know, eliminating out those congenital abnormalities. Remember that that of out of those thousands of patients. The most common cardiac causes infrequently when they did recur <laughs> were, uh, was um, cardiomyopathy and um, an anomalous coronary artery, which which can be excluded by echocardiography. Is that, is that a help out or do you want to yeah. answer that question? She said, perfect. Yes, transesophageal echo done and lots of big life changes and pressures in her young life. Keep working on the therapy relaxation techniques. Thank you. Next question. When do you like to see a chest x-ray completed as part of a workup? <clears throat> That's a good question. And and uh, the answer really did come from um, uh, the the SCAMPS guideline protocol. When, um, when there was an acute illness where there was um, 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 fever, uh, cough, suggestions of of of, of a, an acute respiratory illness. A chest X-ray did help out. Um, in the absence of 
of anything suggesting a, an, an, an infectious uh, illness, um, the chest x-ray did not help out at all. And it's why it was listed as one of the unhelpful causes. So if, if there's an acute illness, particularly with 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 fever, the the, uh, um, this, the we're thinking about the um, the pericarditis, uh, myocarditis root. Um, then a chest X-ray was was um, was listed as um, as being um, as being appropriate. In uh, in the SCAMP study, there were a couple of cases of pneumonia. Thank you. I don't see any other questions, but we'll still pause and we'll wait for last minute questions. All right. Well, I think, oh, just a comment. So helpful. Thank you so much. So we are. Uh, thank you all. So thank you so much, Dr. Engoff, for uh, doing this today. It was really fantastic. A great way to close our year. And thank you all for joining us today.